And I now recognize the committee ranking member, Mr. Nadler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I find myself in rare agreement with Mr. McClintock, not on the subject of immigration and not on the uh, actions of the Biden administration, not on the causes of what's happening, but on the constitutional question, which is clear. Uh, Mr. Jadwat, is there an open legal question as to whether these states have independent authority over immigration and foreign policy? Or is it clear that the Constitution gives the federal government primacy over these matters? Uh, no, Mr. Congressman, it, it's clear that that is the federal government's job. And generally, how would you characterize the Supreme Court's rulings in cases where the federal government has challenged state regulation of immigration matters on the basis that such regulations are preempted by the Supremacy Clause and federal law? Have they been more favorable to the federal government or to the states? To the federal government. And how would you characterize these rulings in general? Again, I think it's clear. The, um, the court has reiterated time and again that this is an area where the federal government has exclusive authority and that states can't enact their own rules or purport to step into the shoes of the federal government and, do, and enforce federal laws. No, thank you. Now, the premise of this hearing is that we are faced with an invasion from abroad, a foreign invasion, and that the states have the power under the Constitution to repel an invasion. Now, multiple federal courts have present, presented with this question, have concluded, in the words of the Circuit Court, of the Third Circuit, rather, quote, that there is no support for reading the term invasion to mean anything other than a military invasion, unquote. Mr. Jadwood, has anybody, has there been any military invasion of the United States? Any foreign armies crossing our borders recently? No, sir, not to my knowledge. Not in fact since 1814. I'll take that, yeah. Um, yeah, I would not include the Confederacy. That was a civil war. Um, now, is there any question that the term invasion uh, does not refer to what's happening now because there's no military force invading us and that whatever is happening at our border, however you want to characterize it, is not an invasion under the meaning of the Constitution? Yeah, I think that's clear both under, you know, the uh, decisions of the courts that have discussed that question uh, and under the plain terms of the Constitution itself. So there is no basis for Texas or any other state claiming authority to do anything other than what the federal government does in this area? That's right. It's correct. Yeah. Thank you. Are you familiar with the Great Replacement Conspiracy Theory? Yes. How does the argument we heard today, uh, we heard here today that there is a, quote, actual invasion of the southern border feed into this racist conspiracy theory? I think that when you talk about people invading the country, poisoning the blood of America, those sorts of terms, um, it adds fuel uh, to the fire of, um, of these kinds of theories. But I, I also think in particular, when you think about the term invasion, right, it paints the so-called invaders as violent. And even more so, it authorizes violence against those people. In war, we can do things that would be illegal in any other context. Killing, violence, you know, all sorts of terrible things. And According to the folks at this table, they're not speaking metaphorically. They're not just using rhetoric. They are actually authorized to engage in war against people who are coming to this country. That, I think, is profoundly dangerous. So you think that promoting this actual invasion argument is not only wrong as a matter of law, but potentially dangerous to innocent people and to the country as a whole? Yes, I do. Let me ask uh, Mr. Hadjik. Given the court's uniform uniform, every decision I'm aware of, uh, interpretation of the term invasion in the Constitution as meaning an inva a foreign invasion by a military force. How do you justify Texas or any other state's uh, um, um, independent actions in this area? Uh, but by the Constitution, it, it's uh, the only diction, there's nothing, there's no sort of uh, law of war Klaus Witzian uh, definition of invasion that's, that has anything to do with that constitutional provision. I just quoted provision. the Third Circuit that says no support for reading of the term invasion to mean anything other than a military invasion. 
this every is, other court that has addressed this issue has said the same thing. You're saying this that is every the federal court is, You're saying that every federal court is wrong, and you're right. I, the courts I that have back. said that, I believe, are wrong. Uh, the, uh, the Constitution simply uses the word invasion, and, and uh, it would carry its meaning in ordinary language. Our courts, and if you look at dictionaries at the time. And I forget dictionaries. Our courts interpret the Constitution and our authoritatively, and our courts have interpreted the, the phrase invasion to, to mean a foreign military invasion, and anything to the contrary is nonsense. I yield back.